to this week's episode of Brooks Looks, the show where we take a quick look at modern art. As always, I'm your host, Brooke Gherkin. On this week's show, we're going to jump into the world of modern cinema by analyzing the art of music, storytelling, violence, and more on the big screen. To better analyze these themes, our focus will be on the Academy Award-winning director, Quentin Tarantino, whose diverse work is beautiful and entertaining, yet highly controversial. So let's quit wasting time and dive right into the crazy mind of Mr. Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino began his film career with the release of the independent film Reservoir Dogs in 1992. Debuting at Sundance Film Festival, Reservoir Dogs was met with positive reviews and is often considered one of the best independent films of all time. Reservoir Dogs put Tarantino on the map, but his release of Pulp Fiction two years later helped solidify himself as a real deal filmmaker. Pulp Fiction was critically named a huge success, gathering many award nominations and wins, including the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. As with all artists, directors are influenced by the works of other directors. Tarantino has listed Taxi Driver, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Jaws, and Apocalypse Now amongst his favorite movies, and has admitted to taking small details from these movies to enhance and improve his own. Tarantino loved the 1981 film Blowout so much that he decided to cast John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. He has also expressed his love for the 2000 Japanese horror film Battle Royale, stating that he wishes that he could have been the director. Battle Royale was also an influence, in a sense, for the hit Hunger Games books and movies, as it pits a classroom full of students in a jungle where the only objective is to be the last one standing, no matter the cost. Tarantino is also heavily influenced by music. He often listens to music related to the movie's time period while writing the scripts. For example, in his 2012 film Django Unchained, he often listened to western-style music that was written during the late 1800s. He even liked a few songs so much that he decided that they were good enough for the final film. This shows how music can be an important tool in the creative process of all artists and can inspire creative thoughts and ideas. As with all directors, music is a key component to Tarantino's work. A slow song can help capture the character's sorrow or regret in the death scene, like this scene from Inglorious Bastards. Since I haven't heard any disturbance, I assume while they are listening, they don't speak English. Yes. I'm going to switch back to French now, and I want you to follow my masquerade as clear. Yes. Monsieur Lapadite. Je vous remercie pour le nom, pour votre hospitalité. Il me semble que nous en avons terminé. Ah, mesdames, je vous remercie pour le temps que vous m'avez consacré. Nous n'avons pas votre famille plus longtemps, donc, monsieur. A fast-paced, upbeat song can raise the viewer's heartbeat in an intense moment, like a chase. A glorious, beautiful song can help express the character's happiness to the viewer, like in this scene from Django Unchained.
Another way that directors can portray art on screen is by how they tell their story. Tarantino experiments with different methods of storytelling in order to keep the viewer engaged and to save certain reveals for the end of the movie. In Pulp Fiction, the movie is split in a non-linear fashion, essentially taking the five main scenes and scrambling them out of order. The opening scene of a diner robbery isn't fully revealed until the end of the movie, yet if it were to be told in a linear fashion, the robbery would be the fourth scene in the movie. He also split Inglorious Bastards into separate acts like a play, and Reservoir Dogs plot centers around the jewelry heist, yet the movie only shows scenes taking place before and after the actual heist. Tarantino's unique storytelling is actually catching on. Christopher Nolan's Memento tells the story in reverse order, in the television hit comedy, How I Met Your Mother, often experiments with different methods of telling an episode story. These unique methods keep the viewer engaged and curious as to where the story may be heading, while also being innovative and artistic. Tarantino is known for using strong language in his films. Swearing can be an art in its own way by demonstrating power in a villainous character, or simply providing comic relief. Racism is strongly represented in Django Unchained, as the N-word is used over 110 times throughout the film. Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction are also known for their profanity, as each one set the record for saying the word fuck over 260 times. What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of! They speak English in what? What? English, motherfucker! Do you speak it? Yes! Then you know what I'm saying! Yes! Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like! What? I Say what again! Say what again! I dare you! I double dare you, motherfucker! Say what one more goddamn time! He's, he's black! Go on! He's bald! Does he look like a bitch? What? Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why you try to fuck him like a bitch, Brett? I did! Yes, you did! Yes, you did, Brett! You tried to fuck him. No, and my son no. Wallace don't like to be fucked by anybody except Mrs. Wallace. The record has unfortunately been passed multiple times, and the recent film, The Wolf of Wall Street, is the current record holder, saying the word fuck 569 fucking times. Tarantino films are also known for another controversial art form, violence. Tarantino's movie plots often center around violent storylines, which he likes to take to the extreme. Huge blood spatters and unique violent deaths are signature elements of Tarantino's over-the-top violence. Although strong language and unrealistic violence can be considered artistic, it often turns away viewers, creating a specific audience that can tolerate his movies. This audience finds the ridiculous violence to be aesthetically pleasing, creating a sense of enjoyment instead of the expected dread or disgust. Uh, Cora, before you go, will you tell Miss Lower goodbye? D do what now? I said tell Miss Laura goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. One last bit of style that Tarantino stamps into his films is the cameo. Although director cameos aren't all that uncommon in the film industry, Tarantino's characters are often in the thick of things, helping progress the plot. The character he plays often doesn't live to see the end of the movie, though, just like many other characters in his films. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Brooks Looks. I hope you are entertained and unoffended by the media presented. Artistic style is very prevalent in modern filmmaking, and maybe next time you sit down with family or friends to enjoy a movie, you will notice and appreciate all of the work that directors put into the making and the style of the film. Next week, we're going to read this stupid sketchbook from cover to cover and make fun of the idiot who filled it. I'm Brooks Gergen. Have a nice day. Y'all remember me, y'all remember me